good evening uh well actually for me it's basically good night but whatever so in this video as always we will talk about the anime scripter and the release of 2.0.1 uh, I skipped over 2.0.0 mainly because I forgot to make a video for it. So yeah, I deemed it necessary to make one with this release of TAS. Um, in this release, there have been some significant changes in regarding to the selection, model selection specifically. But we will go from top to bottom. So if you remember, there was a question mark here. It has been moved to a special um, about page for it. Uh, it contains a couple of more data, more info. Um, it has system requirements, GPU compatibility, please adjust your settings. It basically has everything that you may need just so, um, I guess it's a better st uh, starter for, for new users. Uh, I got also added some buttons here. I'm not sure if this was present prior to 2.0.0, but um, at least it's present now. It also has a built-in um, semi-functional update feature. Bas basically, it checks if there's a new update. It prompts you with a toast, which I will show in just a second how it looks. And it will tell you that, hey, there's a new update. You can update if you want to. Um, let's go from pre-render. Pre-render, um, I made a couple of changes to the pickers that go to the drop downs. Um, it, it will have like a little icon, a small bunny, just to tell you, oh, hey, this is fast. Or, or oh, hey, this is, uh, this is actually um, slow. Uh, with the snail. Uh, it also tells you that after the 2020 or after the 2020 plus. <clears throat> I fixed a couple of bugs as well regarding the delete pre rendered file this, um, in update 2.0.0. I've also updated a couple of um, helper icons here. Uh, the same here. So you see this, for example, I added Flownet S for the duplication for NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, it has a snail indicating it, it's a slower process overall. <clears throat> There's also the restore. So all of them have this new updated layout, new updated descriptions. It tells you that in real life video game CGI and what is the purpose of it, Dino is in this case. It can also be the JPEG. It can also be properly compressed. I added anime fix at TensorRT. I added uh, Fastlane Dark and TensorRT. Um, th these are pretty, I mean, anime fix at TensorRT is a really good model. Um, uh, it was made by, I don't want to botch his name. I think it was Zach Srax, I think. I don't want to botch his name, but I believe it was like that. It has, all of the credits are attributed in the readme. Um, interpolate, yeah, I've added, 4 to 5 Heavy was added recently. I also added GMFSS back, though though this is still in beta, so this is a caution, let's say. I would not recommend it for people with a really low-end GPU, but um, yeah, everything now has a description and everything in between. I've also added dynamic flow scale. Uh, basically, it adjusts the internal resolution at which um, Rife works at. It's still experimental. Um, it, it only works with the NVIDIA GPU, uh, NVIDIA GTX GPU models. Um, use it, try it out if you like it. Sure, if you don't, it is what it is. Um, I've also added in the upscale section, what have I added? So I added Open Proteus. Okay, these are already present. What else have I added? I added the RTM OSR Tesla T. This one is a really, really fast model made by Umzi. Um, UMZI, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, I'm sorry. But yeah, I, if you have a lower end GPU, like a, like a 1060, sorry, 2060 or something like that, you can definitely uh, use it and see how you like it. But the performance is really, really high. It's about 70% faster than SuperUltraCom, which is the fastest model prior to this. Um, yeah, I added some descriptions here as well. In the coding panel, I've only added, I believe, some slow presets, uh, some more slow presets. Uh, typically, you wouldn't really want to use them, only only if you're like super low on storage and you don't may, mind the wait time, the extra wait time. Um, universal 16-bit workflow required for these. You can use them with 8-bit workflows, but it's kind of not worth it. 
I've updated the drop downs for these, the question marks. And this now tells you that, hey, this is a wraparound NFI CLI. All credits go towards the NFI CLI team. This function then takes experimental and tells you some instructions. So basically, I have a lot of the um, info, info tools have been reworked. Same for YouTube video. It uses YouTube DLP. Um, or well, it's powered by in this case, but it's a wrapper around YouTube DLP. Uh, extract depth map. So here have been a couple of uh, changes apart from the picker. So depth map low quality and high quality. Um, if you use the tensor at your direct ML variants, uh, the high preset no longer has any effect and only, you can only use the low one. The low preset will now have a significantly improved quality compared to previous releases. Thank you for the TAS community for helping me fix this and improve this. But yeah, overall, the high method is no longer available for TensorRT and DirectML and, and only for the NVIDIA GTX GPUs. Use a caution, um, you, you will typically only use the low quality and don't really bother with high quality anymore. Um, I did the open change logs button, which just quite literally just opens the change logs so you can read them, everything that I've added. <coughs> In the toolbox, so there's a new feature toolbox, which basically tells you that, hey, you can add an adjustment layer of one frame. Let's make it four frames. Let's make it entire selected layer. So yeah, it's long as a layer. It's it's a quick um, tool to quickly create adjustment layers. Uh, the same can be said for the solid layer, obviously. Uh, there's a new feature, arrange layers. Let me just do this. So if I do arrange layers, it will arrange them. This is from top to bottom, or you can do bottom to top. So it goes from bottom to top or top to bottom. I've added a purge cache. This is quite literally just deletes the cache. It's the same as um, edit purge and all cache. It's the same thing. Um, take a screenshot. This quite literally just takes a screenshot of the viewport. So it's a uh, viewport resolution dependent. So it's dependent on this. If I do fall, it's at 1080p in this case, or if you do quarter, do a screenshot, it's at 480 by 270, and the change is visible. Um, yeah, that's mainly it. A bunch of UI changes, a bunch of new features, a bunch of bug fixes, and that was the main priority for 2.0.0. Uh, I've heavily improved the part of, um, well, a bunch of bugs that, that were present in TAS. I'm going to show off the toast feature in just a second. Let's do pre-render with QuickTime and do, do, do just the duplicate for now. So this is starting the pre-render. This is a toast. Wait for the pre-render to happen. The pre-render is done. And it's processing in the background. And boom, it's done with the deduplication. So it just basically tells you processing completed successfully and after five seconds it disappears automatically. You don't have to press it unless it's an update notification, in which case it does show it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's mainly it. I hope you enjoyed using TAS. Um, thank you for downloading. The latest releases have had major amounts of downloads and, and it pleases me to know that people actually use it and enjoy it. Um, that's basically it. Have a wonderful night. Goodbye.